Welcome everyone to Gamer Mel. Today, AMD's next-gen Threadripper is coming soon. Intel's 12,900K is set to change everything. NRX 6000 refresh, and Nvidia is about to release a new flagship gaming GPU. Okay, it's news time and first up for today, if you've been waiting for AMD's next-gen Threadripper lineup, you likely won't have to wait much longer, as two new Threadripper processors were recently spotted. The CPUs were found on Milky Way at Home, which is a volunteer network to model the Milky Way Galaxy. When it comes to the new processors, we first have the Threadripper Pro 5995WX, which is a 64-core, 128-thread CPU. Next is the Threadripper Pro 5945 WX, which is a 12-core, 24-thread part. Basically, the core count looks to be the same as last gen, but of course, that's to be expected. These are said to be based on Zen 3, so there's no big reason to think they would or could move up in cores. Either way, with the parts being tested, AMD is clearly working on them, though of course there's a chance that these results were spoofed, but thanks to the Gigabyte leak, we already know that Next Gen Threadripper, codenamed Chagall, at least exists. And while these are the pro parts, the mainstream CPUs shouldn't be far behind. Now, before I get to the next story, if you love getting the most up-to-date PC hardware news, make sure to subscribe, as well as hit that bell icon to get notifications. Not only that, but if you like talking PC hardware, make sure to join the GamerMeld Discord server for free at discord.gg slash GamerMeld. Check that out today. Next up for today, a new benchmark on Intel's upcoming 12900K is out, and it's seriously impressive. The benchmark was found on Geekbench, and while it has been taken down for some reason, Video Cards has a good breakdown of the information. As you can see, it got a single core score of 1893 and a multi core score of 17,299. When we compare that to last gen, the single core score is a measly 2% faster, which is a bit disappointing, but remember that Alder Lake doesn't have the AVX 512 instruction set that Rocket Lake does, so that could be one reason. Also, the maximum frequency was clearly not read correctly because it shows 3 megahertz. So we don't know what the boost clock was and the base clock seems to be a bit low, meaning it may not have been running at that high of a frequency. So the end result could be better. Regardless, the big thing here is the multi-core score. The 12900K of course crushes the 11900K because it has more cores, but it even beats AMD's 16 core Ryzen 5950X. Now, before you talk about how you can get a better score on your 5950X or how it's last gen, etc., hear me out. As long as Intel hasn't added some new SKU between the 900 and 700 parts, it's made to go against the 5900X, not the 5950X. Meaning as long as Intel doesn't drastically change their pricing, the 12900K even getting close to the 5950X is a huge deal. It would be a really big jump in price to performance. And sure, AMD could of course lower their prices and release higher core CPUs, but that's the beauty of competition. And don't forget that we've seen a similar benchmark before. Basically, Intel looks to finally be back. Next up, it looks like AMD may be releasing a refresh of their RX 6000 GPUs. According to a new post by Foronix, AMD just added a ton of new device IDs for RDNA 2 GPUs to their Linux driver. We're talking a total of 17 IDs. As Foronix says, it's pretty odd for AMD to release a slew of new IDs this late in the game. They could of course be used for some kind of new custom designs or reserved for future engineering samples, but this amount of IDs dropping at once is definitely weird. If anything, it likely points to some type of refresh. That, or if you remember, I recently discussed a leak that claims the lower end cards for AMD's next gen parts are a 6 nanometer refresh of RDNA 2. So these could be that. Or, given we've been hearing about a super refresh of NVIDIA's RTX 3000 series, they could easily be a response to those. Time, as always, will tell. And lastly for today, it looks like NVIDIA is set to release a new top-of-the-line GPU above their RTX 3090. That's right, if you've been following the channel, you know that we've seen information on a new super lineup for NVIDIA's 30 series GPUs. So far, it's mostly been details on super cards for laptops, with the existence of desktop variants remaining unknown. That is, until now. 
First up, we have new information from known leaker Graymon55, who tweeted 3090 Super and 10,752 FP32. Basically, NVIDIA is planning to release a Super variant of their highest end card with the full GA102, which is a couple hundred more cores than the regular 3090. He also replied to the tweet with 400 watts plus, and that plus part looks to be more the case, as the news doesn't stop there. The very trustworthy leaker, copi 7 Kimmy also tweeted out details on an RTX 3090 Super. And of course, with two known leakers claiming the card exists, it's looking more and more true. Either way, copi 7 Kimmy gives us a bit more details. For one, he claims that the card does come with 10,752 cores, but that it doesn't come with NVLink, meaning NVIDIA is likely done with the tech for their GeForce lineup. Of course, that's not too surprising given the 3090 was the only card to include it this gen. Next, he claims that it comes with 21 gigabit per second memory, which is a bit faster than the 3090, but we'll have to see how much of a difference it can make in games. Next, he claims that it draws at least a whopping 450 watts, which basically means I need a new PSU. And lastly, the card is set to come out this year. Clearly, NVIDIA isn't wasting any time in releasing their new lineup. Let's just hope we actually get a chance to buy one. So while that does it for today, are you excited for these new Super GPUs or do you think AMD is set to release a new lineup themselves? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you liked the video, please subscribe. And as always, have a great day.